who's an excited little listener? Would that be you? Yes, you're an excited little listener. You should be excited because we've got a treat for you today. And I've been kind of teasing with you, you guys with this over the last couple of weeks or so. But we've got a whole bunch of celebrity interviews lined up. And uh, who else to start off our list of celebrity interviews than James Yeager, the MF CEO of Tactical Response and anything else he wants to be the MF CEO of. So James is hanging out on the line. That's where you put your pictures. Is you put them out on the line so people can see them. James, thanks for being with us. Thanks, man. Uh, exchange gram is a wonderful thing. It, it is. You know how people like to take pictures and then they want to share them with their friends. <laughs> they go on the line. That's right. They go on the line. That takes pictures and immediately puts them online. On the line. On the line. Oh. I think that's, that, that, that. That, that, that's <laughs> that, that, that. What was most funny about that was how uncomfortable it made the twenty-something hippies. They're like they're so they're so uncomfortable with the improper speak. Like no, no. he's like, yeah, yeah, I, I got it. You, you, this is track with me. Stay with me here. All right. <laughs> James and I have known each other for six, seven, eight, something, nine years. I don't know. Uh, not quite yeah, well. not quite a decade, but going all the way back to uh, before he was famous and uh, when he was just. I was always. You was always was famous. always somebody. You were always somebody. Uh, it just you folks out in the audience didn't know. <laughs> it took me 10 years to become an overnight success. That's right. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah and, and you know what's, what's I find hilarious about that, James, is, is you and I both, we've been like in the trenches doing our thing. You know, the salad, you know, I asked, I said something, was it you? I said salad days. And you're like, like when you eat salad. Yeah. Oh, that's, an, that's, a, that's another thing that, that young people don't get. I said something about the salad days. And Jared's like, yeah, we had those. Dude, like, I never heard that term. Before. I said you had those. He goes, yeah. When I worked at Wendy's, we had the salad days. I'm like, no. that's true. <laughs> <laughs> no, son. That's but not now what I that know. Means. Now he knows. No, but you, you and I, we, you know, been behind the scenes, just doing our things. You know, buying and selling and trading guns. So we could pay the rent and put gas in our cars and and what have you. And then yep. you do what you do now, and people are like, oh. Did you used to do other stuff too? <laughs> it's like yeah, and, and uh, or somebody's like, oh, you, you know, you should you should write, you should write that stuff. And I'm like, yeah, I really should. I I should write that stuff. Uh, you know what I, I I discovered to my chagrin, and and I love sharing this with these these new gun writer people is that here's the deal: if you write for gun magazines, the only people that know that you write for gun magazines are your family and your friends. The people. That write, <laughs> the people that read the articles, they don't even know. I had some. Right. Yeah, I had someone say, "Oh man, you should." Have, this article about derp and derp and derp, and, derp, and I was like, "Yeah, that sounds interesting because I f wrote that." Oh, are you sure? Yeah, I'm pretty sure that I did exactly what you're describing. <laughs> oh, well, I didn't know. I didn't know who wrote it, but I, I, I read it. And I looked at the pictures and read the title. It's like the only time they know who wrote it is when they don't like it. Yeah, exactly. When they're when they're writing the letter to the editor about how outraged right. they are, right? You, you remember yeah. that from the the eighties and nineties, like, dear editor of Guns and Ammo magazine, <laughs> Guns and Sandwiches, Guns and Sandwiches. I have been a, a dedicated reader for twenty million years, and until until, until now. now, and <laughs> I I can't believe that you posted this article by James Yeager, and I will never ever purchase your magazine again, and I will tell all my friends and sycophants not to do that as well. <laughs> Or, or the ones that start out with, I know you know this, this is the letter that starts with, I. it's almost like a letter to Playboy. I'm 37 years old, and I carry... I never a, thought it would happen to me. I never thought it would happen to me. But I carry a, a Kimson, a Crimber, a Crimber, <laughs> you have a, a Kimber Crimson Carry Elite Model 4 in a Galco Slick Slide number 1 with a da 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 da, da and it's like, what kind of shoes were you wearing? That's what I always want to ask them. <sighs> <laughs> well, n n not that, not you know. Speaking speaking of uh, d days gone by, uh, and one, you know, an icon in, in the industry since those days, 
uh, you guys recently had Ken Hackthorn on, on your uh, on your show. Oh yeah, Ken and is like it's, it's a, a, a couple of things stand out to me. Number one is that when I bring his name up, most people don't know who he is, which is sad. It really is. It really is sad. And uh, number two, he knows who I am. I was really happy about that. <laughs> Hell yeah, Ken knows who you are. He That's appreciates you, know you taking made. all the heat off everybody else. <laughs> I, 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 yeah, I, I, <laughs> I referred to him uh, yesterday. As a uh, a tactical Confucius. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> like like uh, who do you call the tactical Buddha or what do you call? No, there's a tactical pageant queen, but that, well, yeah, that's a different story. Different story altogether. <laughs> but uh, no, well, Ken's living up on a mountain now, and I told him, I'm like, dude, you're you're up there living on a freaking mountain in Idaho. You're like the you're like the tactical Confucius. You know, oh yeah, we need to make a pilgrimage to the mountain. So that we yep. can gain the wisdom. So that we can also see. That's right. Exactly. <laughs> All right. But, we just... uh, you know, it's, it's, it, I mean, just one more thing about Ken. It, it, again, a consummate professional. And he did some, when I took his pistol class, he did some downrange stuff. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and I laughed and I said, you know, Ken, I said, I don't know why I get so much, you know, crap for this and you don't. And he said, oh, he says, oh, no, James, everybody does this. And I said, no, they don't. It's me and you. And uh, and he said, no, 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 you know, blah, blah, blah. We came back the next day, called the whole class together, and apologized to me. And he said, James, he said, I got to thinking, and you were right. Me and you were the only one on the commercial side doing it. He said, my point of view is everybody I hang out with on the special operations side, they all do it. It's just common. They just do it. And so in my eyes, it was a common thing. But as you pointed out, it's not on this side of the fence. And uh, and so that kind of legitimized, you know, what, what I think that he and I are doing in this community is the professionals are doing it. Why can't the civilians do it? Oh, well, I, I don't know. It, it, <laughs> Dude, you made him you, – you kept him up that night thinking about that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, Maybe not everybody does this. You, well, and that's the thing is when, when, when you get into your realm, your world, and, and we all do it. It doesn't matter whether you're a doctor or a nurse, a lawyer or whatever. You get into your realm and you hang with your group of peers and you just assume that other people understand. And I, I know I run into that where I've said something or done something or demonstrated something and – You've done it how many times? Like, you can't count the number of times you've said or demonstrated that. And so you just kind of fall into that, well, everybody gets it, right? I'm sure right. that everybody gets it by now. And then you encounter right. them, and they're like, I don't understand why you would want to do that. And you're like, dude, I only... Okay, let's talk. <laughs> well, well, I mean, it's like one of these, the, the, these things. There's this new thing called the Temple Index. Um, I've always called it up for the last 19 years I've been teaching it. But it's this new thing called holding your gun up so you don't shoot people you don't want to shoot. And it's this wonderful, amazing technique that, again, I had a stupid name for it. I just called it up. Yeah. And um, <laughs> I, gotta, I can get better marketing people. Yeah. Um, but 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 it's but it's in, it's in fad now. So I, I, I'm glad to see that the rest of the world is at least – starting to come this way i mean I, you know i've had well, head start and yeah, it's unfair there's there's still people that are they're kicking and screaming i think you you and i both know that they get on their blogs and they kick and scream about how horrible it is and tragic and and you should never do that in the history of the world and yada 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 and well, i experienced a similar thing where i had no idea how fortunate i was in 1986 to come under the tutelage of john farnham Right. And so I took, you know, I went out to and I did a, an extended training class in Colorado. It was it was two weeks long. But uh, four of the two day, four days of the two weeks was John Farnham firearms training. We did paintball stuff. We did. And that was when they, they had those old Crossman 50 caliber revolvers. <laughs> right. Which right. were awesome because they worked really, really well. Uh, yeah. And then we, you know, we did we did like team stuff. Did did you ever did you know about the ESI and their driving school part? No, I guess not. Okay, well, they had a driving part, and we actually did, like, ambush, counter-ambush and breaking ambushes where we fired from moving vehicles. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Can you imagine that today? Can you imagine lining a bunch of cars and saying, all right, this is what we're going to do? People would lose their ever-loving minds. 
Yeah, I know I do that stuff. Yeah, I mean, well, they're like, I can't believe it. You allow people to shoot from a moving car. It's like, well, yeah, we did. And the uh, humanity, the humanity. But you know, I took that class and I left there feeling pretty good about myself. And then as I progressed throughout my life, you know, five, six, seven, some ten years later, I pick up a magazine. And they're like, oh, this is the new hotness. You know, you should do it like this. And I was like, I'm like, dude, I did that. 10 years ago in John Farnham's class, and, and you just figured out that that is the new hotness. Oh. You know what's sad about that, really, about you taking that class in 1986? And I also have the same sense of sympathy for students whose first class is with us, like Fighting Pistol with us, mm-hmm. is what do you compare that to? Yeah. Like, if you'd taken a bunch of crappy classes... And then took our class, then you've you you know you've taken some steps and you've gone to the top. And I know this sounds getting t- terribly arrogant, but but what you and I teach is the top. And so and, and students come to me all the time and they say, "Where do I go from here?" And I'm <laughs> it's just like, you know, good luck. Well, it, down and, 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 <laughs> or on a on a flat plane. And it, well, and the thing is, you know, you get these like a first time student. You, you can give them a survey at the end of the class, and you say, "What did you think about the class?" And they can. It does. You know, a guy who's never taken a class and he took one. It doesn't matter whether he says your class is the best one in the world. I mean, it makes you mm-hmm. feel good. He says, "Oh, it's the greatest training in the history of the world." I'm like, well, that's good. But what do you? Or he could say it's the shittiest training in the history of the world. His opinion really is it doesn't matter because he has nothing to compare it to. That's like giving a, a, a private, you know, in a, uh, an E1. You're like, hey, take this survey. Tell us what you thought about infantry school. Oh, this is the best infantry school I ever went to. Well, <laughs> compared to what? You don't know anything. And people we, say, we had a guy just recently in a fighting pistol class, and it was his first commercial firearms class. And he said, there's a lot of downtime in this class. You know, in a class where, as you know, we shoot a thousand rounds in two days. Yeah. He thought there was a lot of downtime. I'm like, brother, you haven't been anywhere else yet. Yeah. <laughs> downtime? <laughs> Dude, I mean, uh, you know, the institutionalized training, military training, that's your life is downtime. Uh, that's, yeah. that's why, well, I don't know any more of these kids with all their electronic gadgets, but that's why... Er- <laughs> You know, every, everybody in, in my unit, we all everybody had cards in their ass packs, so that when you were, you know, when, when you weren't doing what you're doing, you'd be playing spades or whatever, because that's all there was was waiting. You know. Uh, yep. Well, you and I just came back, or well, we didn't go come back together. You were already kind of up there, but from the NRA annual meeting up in Nashville, yep. Tennessee, and we talked about it from our perspective. But what, what I want you to do is. Um, kind of give us your perspective of the NRA annual meeting in Nashville this year that just uh, just went down, and you know, give us James Yeager's takeaways. Well, I mean, the first thing I want to do is com- compare and contrast a couple of things: um, Shot Show and NRA Show. Uh, Shot Show is for manufacturers to find dealers; it's not set up for the public. And then NRA show is for manufacturers to interface with the public. And so it's, when you go into a booth at, at Shop Show and say, hey, what is the specifications on this? The guy goes, how many do you want to buy? When you go into that same booth at Shop Show, there's different people in the booth. And you say, what are the specifications? Oh, let me tell you about that. I shoot these myself. Da, 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 da. So the only reason everybody wants to go to Shop Show is simply because you're not allowed to go. It's so they just can like, tell their friends it, on it, Facebook that they're it, it, it's, it's very immature. Like I got I got to know a guy. I got to sneak in. I got to you know get a pass and pay a guy off and you know whatever. Um, and NRA show is for consumers. And why it's kind of just passed off as not being the place is beyond me. But it is the place. Now to more specifically answer your question about the you know the, the 2015 NRA show in Nashville, I enjoyed it like I do all the other NRA shows. I find that. It's it's a much uh, a much more polite crowd uh, than Shot Show. Um, I don't really li- I didn't really like having it in Nashville, even though that's my backyard. Nashville's just not set up for conventions that size. You know, Vegas does that really well. Um, but uh, but the show itself I thought was run very smoothly, uh, and I was very happy with the the show itself and the layout. And it was easy to get around. It was easy to navigate. You know. Uh, you know, um, but overall, I had a very pleasant experience as I, as I do in all the NRA shows. Now, you, were you really scared because there were so many people under that roof with guns? <laughs> the funny part is, every NRA show, every shot show, there is some group 
that's going to pick it, right? Mom's Demand Action was there in Nashville. Did you go out and see them? No. There were six of them, <laughs> and, and there were four cars. So I imagine that this one girl said to the other girl, hey, let's go get coffee, and already had the signs in the back, went through Starbucks, maybe hit Panera Bread for a muffin or something, and then and they came on out to the thing and said, oh, while we're here drinking our coffee, hold this sign. Like, I think two of them were probably duped into it. <laughs> um, but, but they're usually there, if it's not raining, they're usually there for an hour to 90 minutes, and then they go home. And that's the protest. And, they, and, and so every city that does this, like Nashville, they've never had an NRA convention before. Man, they had the riot gear ready, man. They had, they thought it was just going to be <laughs> Clash of the Titans out there, like Braveheart. Rah! And, you know, she's six, it's six soccer moms, the you know, little chubby chicks, and um, sitting out there, you know, going, guns are bad and stuff, guns are bad and stuff. And then they left. <laughs> and they did, did they really even get close to the convention center? Someone told me that they were down at the waterfront Yeah, like park. a block, block and a half away. Or yeah, they don't want to get too close to the barbarians because those people are dangerous. Yeah. Oh, Lord in heaven. I have, a, I have a whole, I'm going to do a YouTube video on Mon some demand action. Um, oh. but, <laughs> well, but, they demand more bedroom it, action because that's obviously well, not I was gonna say that, the action of. they're wanting. They're not getting, so they're yeah. doing something else. They but, gotta, but I got, I got some, I got some YouTube gold on the way. Trust me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, well, we, we laid down the gauntlet about a year ago that if if Shannon from the Moms Demand More Bedroom Action, if she's really serious about you know hope and change and stuff, that we would be willing to sit down with her. But first, she had to come to our break room and make a sandwich uh, barefoot. Oh, come on. She hasn't taken us up on it yet, though. But it's still out there. I mean, I'm willing to, to come to the table. She just needs to bring a sandwich to the table, and I'll come to it. <laughs> come on. That's no way to establish a communication. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm waiting. You know, actually, one of, one, of the, one of the moms, uh, we, we met a, an NRA woman uh, at, at – or a, a – yeah, a, a woman who was at the NRA, NRA. and uh, after she got back, she she snapped a photo of of uh, mayonnaise and and and, uh, and bread and, and a knife and sent it to us and said, I, "I'm back home doing what I need to be doing." And we're like, <laughs> "Rock on!" <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Woo! And this is a woman doing this. Uh, oh, I right. got a question for you. Um, being the the misogynist that you are, and you know who uses the word misogynist. Uh, Unix. I thought massage therapist. Yeah. That. This is what you call massage therapist. Unix and lesbians are the only people that use that word. But, uh, <laughs> dude, nobody knows who the Unix is. <laughs> Google it. Our audience knows uh, it. Google it. So, no, we get, we get letters from uh, uh, demanding that we be more polite to women and we be more women friendly and so forth. But it's never, Jared, tell it's me. It's never a woman. It's always from a dude. I'm like, can you go get your purse and put your skinny jeans yeah. on and walk away? Yeah. Do you get that? Yep. Do you get like, like, like uh, metrosexuals write you and say, you need to be more polite to women? Oh, dude, go look at the hot, crazy matrix. Uh, video. Look at the comments from all the dudes that are put off by it. But the women, like, I guess, they th I guess they think their girlfriend or the girl that wants to be their girlfriend is going to read their comment and go, "Oh, he's 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 such an advocate for women's rights. I'm gonna I'm gonna go out with that guy." No. Not, it's, not. I'm not gonna go out with that guy because he's a weak vagina. Well, and you know who oh, yeah. was who was most offended by the. Uh, uh, all right, let's. You want to talk? Let Let's talk. Let's talk about what happened at Valdosta State University last week. Uh, or well, no, it was more than a week ago, but whatever. Um, where the uh, the the First Amendment supporters decided to throw the flag on the on the on the ground and and stomp on it and uh, and then burn it. And that uh, the chick, the Air Force veteran chick, you know what I'm talking about? Are you familiar with the story? Yeah. yeah. So she goes and she snatches it up. And my question that I had was. Why is one single white female the only person right. standing up? Where where was the where were all the white or any men? I don't care if you're white, purple, orange, black, yellow. Where are the men standing around her saying, "No, no, no, no. We're not we're not going to bully this woman." Where are they? Right. James, where exactly. were they? Yep. Listen, Albert Einstein said it best. Being a warrior means being genuine every moment of your life. And that girl is a warrior. Uh, I'd actually never the hair standing up on the before, back of my yeah. neck. I didn't. I was not aware of that quote. That's that's awesome. Yeah. 
I don't I don't know how to put it better than that. And, and well, the follow up on that is they're like, oh, that sweet little innocent uh, First Amendment protester. Uh, he was packing, and and now he's got a warrant for his arrest, and they're trying to hunt him down. What? Shock. Why? That's a shock face right there. Can I can I go to Valdosta State and and uh, take a dump on a Koran? Am I allowed to do that? Is that protected no, by the that's First what, Amendment? That's not going to happen. Not, why? Why not? You can tear no, up the no, Bible no. And, and throw it on the ground because it's a symbol of white oppression and racism. No, no, no. The flag is. That's well, the, the yeah. flag is a symbol. Well, I mean, yeah. White supremacy and racism. I, see, I thought this. That's where we've gotten, James. They're they're so far away from the origins. It's like I thought the stars and bars was you know white supremacy and racism. Now it's just the whole entire you know old glory flag. Well, they don't even know where. They don't even know the, the history of the American flag, about the red and white stripes being the Sons of Liberty flag or the, the blue panel being from George Washington's camp, camp flag. I mean, they, have no, they don't even know the origin of what those symbols that they hate so much even are supposed to mean. Well, well you know, down here in Mississippi, we still have the stars and bars in our state flag, and they've not capitulated <laughs> or taken it <laughs> yeah, Dude, that's just... <laughs> you know, uh, the Tennessee boys like don't get me started on that. Uh, what you know? What I want to know, James, is uh, yeah. is there not a KA chapter on Valdosta State University? There must not be. We need to research that. Uh, and you know who the <laughs> KAs are, right? No, not the KKK. No, the Kappa right. Alpha Order. That and it's not a fraternity. You ask any of these Southern boys, and they'll say it's not a freaking fraternity. It's an order. Uh, but the the, <laughs> Kappa, the Kappa Alpha Order was a fraternal organization which was founded by Robert E. Lee. I didn't know that. Yes, he is the founder. And uh, most Southern universities have a Kappa Alpha order. And they used to do Old South days where they would have parades and they would all dress up in, in Confederate uniforms and so <laughs> forth until all the, the colleges started being run by metrosexuals. And they, they told them they couldn't right. do that anymore because it offended people. Uh <laughs> We, Do we have anything happy to talk about? Yeah, let's let's talk about the uh, the uh, Mini 14 and 300 Blackout. I'm really excited about that. I'm on the waiting okay, list. Okay, good, because I thought you were going to want to talk about the Glock 43, but okay, the Mini 14. <laughs> so they took they took a gun that nobody has a use for and put it in the caliber that a few people have a use for. <laughs> the, only, the only state where people actually buy Mini 14s is California. Because it's a because cal- it doesn't have a protruding pistol grip, and so the only place they're going to sell that gun is in California. But in California, you can't have suppressors. You know the peasants. What does that? The, what does that have to do with anything? Well, the blackout. I mean, the yeah, no, but what does that? Have to do with anything? I mean, it, it, I mean, it, it made sense. Yeah, I'm saying it, it, the only place they're going to sell that gun is in California. They got ten round magazine. Mini Fort, the, it's the it's the gun of the slave. It's the slave gun. Can we call it a slave gun? Yeah, let's go ahead and do it. Uh, I got a question for you. Do you believe that as long as the firearms industry keeps kowtowing to all these slave states like New York and Connecticut and Massachusetts and so forth, uh, that they will ever fix themselves? Oh, absolutely not. Like when I see the the pump action AR fifteen. You know, that's that's not a Samato, it's a pump gun. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. It's made to take AR mags. I'm like, you're not helping. I'm filled you're with the not, urge to defecate. You're not helping. Yeah, because, all right, I, and I've, and I've, I've said, it's like, it's like uh, you think you're doing a good thing by giving your out-of-work bum bro- brother-in-law 20 bucks, but as long as you keep giving him 20 bucks, he's not going to fix himself. And as long as we keep listen, making special California listen, there's a, legal, there, there's a bunch of bunch of dudes up in Connecticut that stood in line to register their guns with their Mola Lale hats and T-shirts on. Oh yeah. Oh, that's ridiculous. Oh yeah. So, so I mean, the, the, you can't you can't fix stupid. Now, now, having said that, here's there's a bunch of freedom loving Connecticut gun owners that did not do that. So I'm not talking about everybody that lives in Connecticut. I'm just talking about the bootlickers that lined up to register their guns. And magazines, whatever. That, yeah, that's, and, that's well, well, and did they just Jared? Did we just not have a story? Oh, that that weird Perry Farrell looking metrosexual creature that they elected to their Senate in uh, in Connecticut. You know what I'm talking about? It's like a Rosa Delora or something. She wants to no. she wants to pay Connecticut citizens. She wants to bribe them 
Uh, what, what was the bribe she was going to give them? A $2,000 tax credit to, to surrender their rifles to the state? So maybe one, well, two. Oh, hell, two all the people that got in line, they probably figured, well, I'm already, I'm already on a list. I might as well get the tax credit. That oh, just makes economic sense. That's right. It's, it's only the reasonable thing to do. While we're on this, I don't get a, I don't get a lot of my philosophies off bumper stickers. <laughs> but I saw a bumper sticker that says, "If it's time to bury your guns, it's actually time to dig them up." Exactly. Wow. Oh yeah, one hundred percent. You know, people are like, they're, they're like, well, I don't want to. <laughs> you, you. I'm sure you get this. Um, the the reasonable gun owner people that tell you, well, I'm I'm not going to join that organization, or I'm not going to do this, or I'm not going to do that because I'm afraid that I'll be on a list, or I'm going to get on a list. I'm like, if you are really legitimately afraid, or you believe that the government is coming up with an enemies list and you're afraid to be on it, hiding is not the solution to that problem. <laughs> Right. And here's the deal. I'd rather be in prison with my friends, the Markles, than than anybody else. So I'm glad we're all on that same list together. Yeah. Mm. Well, there will be, you know, if I ever disappear, James, and I've told Jared this, there will be signs of a struggle. <laughs> <laughs> they won't be able to Someday hide I might disappear and you don't hear from me anymore, but pay attention because there will have been signs of a struggle. There will have been signs of a struggle. Yeah. And I'm sure you're yep. with me on that. So I, I want to talk to, uh, I want to get Mr. James here to talk about the difference between the gun culture and the gun community. Because uh, we've had a lot of questions. Well, the shooting industry. Yeah. Well, I mean, we, well, as a, for a very recent example, um, in Connecticut, there's a gun culture and a gun community. The gun community are the ones that stood in their line to appease their liberal masters. And then the gun culture of Connecticut said, some expletives and I'm not going to do that they'll have to come and take it from me and so that's it it's basically the gun community are a bunch of politically correct bootlicking slaves trying to appease, appease their liberal masters who don't care anything about them and the gun culture are people like us that would rather die than submit yeah James I had a uh I'm not going to say his name because he didn't give me permission to use it on the radio, but a, a somebody who was a former president of a firearms company, if I said the name of the firearms company, you would know him. But right. but he, he called me. He said, he sent me an email and said, hey, you got time for a phone call? And he called and he said, Paul, he said, I don't understand. He said, I thought that being a part of the firearms industry meant that I was part of the crowd of good guys, part of the crowd of people that get it. And he said... I look at, into, at the firearms industry, and he said, I don't see that anymore. He said, no. he, he said, you know, what can we do? You know, what, and, and are you with me there? I mean, why is it, James, that the people in the, quote, firearms industry don't recognize the fact that, that the nation is legitimately in peril? Because money. I, I don't know. And, you know, and as controversial as my, my rant video was, it was amazing to me how many people in the gun industry shunned me, um, and I and I understand it was it was volatile. I get that, but like I, it, I, I the finding opportunity, but it really made me see that there. That's that's when I saw that there were two different groups that I had not seen before: the gun community and the gun culture. I actually saw it for the first time, and like let's look at like gun companies like Barrett Firearms. Chris and Ronnie Barrett, Angela Barrett, are friends of mine. They are also alumni. They are shooters from the word go. Most of the people that run gun companies are businessmen. They, they've made bumpers for cars or golf balls or tennis balls. And now the thing they're making is this gun. They don't know anything about it. They don't even know anything more than they did about the golf ball. But it's the widget that's coming out of their factory, and, they, and they're they're doing their best to sell it. And um, and it's very it's very rare to find people in that work in gun companies that especially big ones that there are actually gun people now small shops yeah they're, they're always shooters in the little shops but but the big ones the, the huge corporations man there are people there that that they're just obama voting liberals man they're just running those companies there's some yeah there's some obama voting liberals that have 
gun television shows, but we won't talk about that here today. Uh, uh, well, almost. Not, okay, yeah, we won't talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, 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 it saddens me. It really does that we have an industry. You know, we've got these guys that they make things. They're like, we're pro-Second Amendment. And, blah, 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 blah. and you say, well, okay. But then you also have organizations that... I, I think that the National Shooting Sports Foundation, the NSF, SSF, and this might get me talked right out of being at SHOT Show next year, but fuck it, uh, that this this whole don't lie for the other guy, you know what? Yeah. Did, how did Johnny the crack dealer get the gat that he used to kill the rival crack dealer? Did, did he convince his good friend Bill to go into a gun shop and fill out the form and straw purchase? What? No. It's horse crap. I, you know what the don't lie for the other guy campaign is to me? To me, I see that as a big fucking appeasement. And you're like, Paul, you're swearing. Yeah. You know why I can swear? Because this is the special hour. Um, and but no, uh, I, I agree. I agree. The, they're, they're pleasing the, their liberal masters. Yeah. Look at us, ATF. Look how reasonable we are. We want to work with you. We want to make sure that, that there's as many restrictions as humanly possible on the transfer of these evil and illicit firearms. You know, Here's something that's funny. Every time I get an ATF inspection because I have an FFL, every time they bring it up, I don't bring it up. Every time they say, yeah, people think that it's our job to shut down gun dealers, and that's just not true. They say that every time without prompting. No kidding. Yep. You know, and and I'm sure that there are some good people that inhabit the ATF. I haven't encountered. Yeah, oh yeah. I haven't encountered any well, listen, of them myself, every, but I'm sure that they're there. Every time they there. come here, because I'm such a radical, uh-huh. they bring it. They bring a gun toting agent, like a real, like a cop with like them, a ATF guy. agent that wears a gun, and they are always the voice of reason. And I'm always glad those guys are here because those guys are like I know they they've gotten a bad rap on some stuff. But I have to tell you, every ATF midget, agent I've ever met that wore a gun was a solid dude. <laughs> I walked into uh, a uh, my gun gun shop slash indoor range, the one that's local here, uh, a few months mm-hmm. ago. And I walk in. The parking lot was almost empty, and maybe one or two other cars. And, then, and I see this woman sitting at a stool at the counter, and her her rear end is so rotund that is overflowing over the edges of the stool and she is a uh well she's not a caucasian person and she it's a female and i walk up and i i like thousand one thousand two i'm like "Ah, they're getting an atf audit yeah (laughs) she wasn't there to buy guns or sell guns or shoot guns uh she was the she was the atf auditor and uh, yeah Oh, yeah. I was like, yeah, there you go. <laughs> she was profiling herself by being in a gun shop. Uh, well, Jared Jared has a question for you. He's like, I, right. I do. I've got, actually, I've got a list. He wants of to know where the color here. goes. Yeah, where does the white go when snow melts? <laughs> you got you to gotta Google that. You gotta, I'm not telling you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I have a list of questions here uh, from some of our audience, and I'm going to ask them. Uh oh. Let's see. Uh, is this going to be like rapid fire stuff? Like, yes, no, maybe. You know, or uh, you could go in, in depth as far as you want. <laughs> 14, purple, briefs, <laughs> none. <laughs> this one might be actually a, a, a long question or maybe not, or a long answer. But it's from William Flores. It says, what's the most important advice does he want to impart on his grandchildren? Do you know um, the answer? D- just uh, and that's, that is a great question. And basically, it is to be an honorable person. And so I've already started, you know, collecting books and things and lessons and to, to instill that, 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 that sense of honor. And, and that's all-encompassing. Honor is all-encompassing. It means loyalty. It means patriotism. It means all that. that, that my, my, biggest, my biggest desire is to turn them into full-grown men. Amen. And you know what's uh, well? This the audience that's going to listen to this understands what you're saying. But um, sadly, the public audience that we have, I think that a lot of them might not understand what a grown man, what being a grown man is, what that means. And that's, um, that's well, sad to me. Well, a grown ass man uh, earns his own keep. He is polite to women and children. He is faithful and loyal to his wife. He abides by the law except for laws that are unconstitutional 
He tells the truth, even when it hurts. He is just a good person. There you go. That is what a grown ass man is. Yep. Um, let's see. John Fry says, <laughs> "Does he polish his head with frog lube for scalp protection?" That's an excellent question. It's actually CLP. <laughs> uh, uh, I just frog lube is just it's 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 not oil based. It doesn't have that sheen that I that I really like. Uh, I got you. <laughs> the sheen, but it does make you smell minty it. fresh. Uh, yeah, it does smell like some Ben Gay or something. <laughs> Uh, Anthony says, "What's his thoughts about a shotgun for shit hit the fan situation?" A shotgun, a shotgun is very underrated and very versatile. Um, a shotgun is an expert's weapon, not not a beginner's weapon, which is often very confusing. All you got to do is aim in a general direction and blah 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 blah. It's, that's all nonsense. But if you look at all the things a shotgun can do, with you can hunt with it with birdshot. You can you, know, you bunch shot slugs for larger game. Um, it's certainly effective at least to a hundred yards with the slugs in it. Um, like if you know if you would not be poorly served to have a shotgun and some training on how to use it. Bingo and some training. Yep, shotgun and training. Guns don't make you well, perform like you need. People to. think I say training because I sell training. It's I'm like sure people like do you think it should be point. like a law that people get training before they get a carry permit? I go no. Should they get training? Yes. <laughs> should not be a law. Uh, Pete Locke says, if you have just retaken a permit class and you realize they were complete hacks compared to the competent info you have received in a prior <laughs> class, what should you do? Smile and move on. Uh, oh, you just you just have to get through it, get your piece of paper, you know, and discard the trash. But keep in mind, some of that stuff that you think is crazy might be the right stuff. I've been spoiled growing up because I've... I don't think I've ever been in a class. I don't think dad would let me go to a class that's right, like exactly. not teaching good stuff. And so I don't really, I mean, I can't, I can't uh, speak from experience of learning crap from people. <laughs> but I, yeah. I, I do think that <laughs> learning, uh, you know, knowing the difference between the two kinds of instructors is very important. And there's only one well, way listen, to figure that out. My daughter shared some, you know, share some of that with you because she only grew up with me and the people I exposed her to. And one time she went with a friend to a public range, and they got the whistle blowing, and you know, and the, all that, you know, you can't load your gun, and like she like she was like a nervous wreck when she came back. She's like, I didn't know what to do. They were yelling at me, and I'm like, What did you do? She says, Well, I walked in and I was wearing my pistol. Oh God, loaded! Oh my God, <laughs> <laughs> you have a loaded gun. You can't have a loaded gun on a range, you know, like. So I, get, I totally get what you're saying. Uh, That's crazy. Yeah, Jared's never sat in the classroom in the back where the guy's like, and the 10th universal safety rule is. <laughs> and it's like, dude, what? I don't remember. You, you're like on number 24. It's like, how many are there? I, I love the guys that have the, the, the commandments of, of gun safety. It's like, dude. <laughs> All right, first, the human animal is not going to remember 18 commandments or 24 or was, or when you go to the range and they, the, the, the air angel will start at the ceiling and go all the way to the floor. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, well, that, that's the thing. You have to know the difference between a range rule and a gun safety rule. And people mix them up in their head all the time. And the problem is when they're not at the range, they don't follow any of them. Right. They're like, well, I'm not at the range. So I can just, you know, whatever. Right. That's the that's the problem. People can't separate those two things. And, and, you know, that really goes into I think, Jim. You know, when you talked about muzzle up uh, or muzzle down yeah. or whatever, is people get into these weird absolutes. They're like, "Well, I went to this range, and you're never allowed to break the 180 yeah, rule right. or, or the 170 rule," and and they think that that translates to the world. You're right. And, and you're like, uh, mm. you know, I, what I want to know is. When, when I'm walking across the Walmart parking lot and Johnny Shitball walks between cars and says, hey, what time is it? And he pulls <laughs> is the knife out. given name? Yeah. And you say, where is downrange in that particular situation? Right. Where, where is where downrange? Is backstop? Yeah, where is the backstop in the, you know, the, the drugstore parking lot? I don't know. It's the, yeah. yeah. They don't, they don't understand. And I have to deal with the stupidity of, of the sheep that mull about the earth. I don't want to have to deal with the stupidity of the instructors. <laughs> yep. All right. We're not instructor bashing. James, why do you think it is that, that – uh, and you're, you've are you been in the instructor game for a long, long time. Why do you think it is that there are so many guys out there that 
it seems like, at least to me, that they they just regurgitate some crap they read in a manual that that's was written in 1957. That well, that's that's all they have, you know. And and you know, the internet's just a you know just a you know phallus measuring you know location, and and, and so they, that's all they have is that that book they read from the 50s, you know, that's all they've got. So they just regurgitate stuff. They don't even know where it came from or why it's being said. It's cliche. That's why I started my, my series, Stupid Internet Gun Stuff. It's just stuff that keeps coming up over and over and over. And they, in the period, I thought there would be like a dozen things. It appears like there's this never-ending list of, of subjects for me to make videos on now. Um, but people, they want to they want they want to at least appear like they know something. And it's very hard for a man to set aside his ego and actually shut his mouth and open his ears and be a student. Mm-hmm. And and if, and if you remember, uh, Ken Hackathorn's uh, interview with you, one of the things he said that really made me feel good is he said, I really don't know James that well, but he was a really good student in my class. That's, if I can go to a class and almost not make an impression on the instructor other than, I was a good student. Well, I, that's what I'm supposed to do as a student. That's, that's my goal. job. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, uh, I've actually known guys that that quit. Uh, a good friend of mine named Dave, and I won't say his last name, but uh, Dave. He told me in confidence about five, six, seven years. I don't know. He, he said that he just stopped teaching public classes. He said I, I'm, I got I got to the point where I couldn't be polite to the guy who was there at the class to impress me by how much he knew. Um, yeah. And he said, so I just stopped. He goes, finally, he goes, I, he goes, that, that, he goes, there's a guy almost in every class that is there to show you how much he knows. He's not there to learn. Yeah. He wants to tell everyone. And, and he said, so I just finally stopped talking. Yeah. Clint Smith has a, a nice quote. It's amazing how many people pay me to teach me how they shoot. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. So you paid me yes. to come here and show me how good of a shooter you are. So that guy, that guy Dave, quit teaching him. I still take those people's money. Yeah. Well, he's back now, <laughs> but he was so frustrated, and he didn't need to do it for a living because um, he had right. other income. But he said, "Because I just couldn't, I couldn't not tell that person that he was a fucked hard and to sit down." So yeah. But uh, yeah. What, what were we talking about yesterday? It was, it was a very germane. Oh man. It was right there on the tip of my tongue. It might come back. I don't even know what you're talking about. We talked about a lot of stuff yesterday. Did we talk about a lot of stuff yesterday? We actually did talk about yeah. a lot of stuff yesterday. But uh, Maybe he has another question. Yeah. Go, you have any oh, more yeah. questions oh, from yeah. the audience? i got a bunch more here. Uh-oh. Uh, Ryan Heffer, he says, what holster do you use to conceal your G19? <laughs> what holster do I use for my G19? Yeah. Yeah, uh, Galco Talon. I say I, I've heard that before on a YouTube video or something. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, Are you, you carrying a G19 right now or an M and P? Well, that, that's I'm not going to make any public statements about my <laughs> oh, again. Oh, that's funny. Mookie already busted you out, but the, yeah, that's yeah, all right. It's cool. I say the next question is the was that Are you going to switch to? No, M&P? it wasn't Mookie. It was EJ. Here, here's the here, here's the deal. Years years ago, three or four years ago, I said finally there's an American made gun that I can tell students they can depend their life on. Yep. And when Smith and Wesson makes a Glock 19 size pistol. I will no longer be a Glock guy. I've said that for years. That was a good answer. And they did it. So we, we've got no, they some... Didn't. Uh, no, they didn't. We've got some... They do not have a 15-round... You know, they've got the full-size gun and then the compact gun, which is some, is, is some oddball. It's bigger than a 26. It's smaller than a 19. It doesn't fit in any niche. Um, and then they got the shield. The shield's awesome, but it's, it's fucking seven or eight rounds, so... Well, Glock has a shield now. <laughs> oh, I hadn't heard that. Well, yeah, well, the, they call it the G43. Yeah, really? I hadn't heard anything about that. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, Bob, I love you if you're listening to this. Oh, oh. we got some man lovers here. Uh, where does he have to go to get his sleeves tightened to make his biceps look bigger? Really? Where do I have to go to do what? Where do you have to go to get your sleeves tightened to make your biceps look bigger? I, I go to the gym. I the gym. The gym. Yeah. yeah, the gym. Uh, it's, a, what's your, it's a secret. What's your favorite dinosaur? Uh, a pterodactyl, and I love spelling it the most. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is not a question. Tell them thanks for throwing the part at NRA and making all the great yeah. videos. That's from Chris. Um, so the, the question was, 
are you going to throw another great party next year at NRA? And the answer is yes. Awesome. In Louisville. There you go. Something to look forward to. It's No, 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 no. no. It's Louisville. 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 Only, only, only buttholes say Louisville. It's Louisville? Louisville. 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 <laughs> Louisville. Okay. Okay. Uh, Work on it. This is, the, <laughs> this is the last one we've got on here. It says, do you have any recommendations on seeking reality-based martial arts training uh, and instruction and use of force training? Where? I don't know. Yeah, I'm, I'm, guessing, fight you. I'm guessing near California because it says, is there any instruction that should be avoided even from Blower Spear? So Blower's in California. I'm guessing they're close to him. Okay. Well, um, our one of the guys that hosts our L.A. Uh, classes, I won't say his whole name. His name is Drew. He's a cop out there. He is big into fighting and all that stuff. And uh, yeah, I wish I could figure out a way to connect those two. But if, if this guy joins our forum, get off the X dot com. Uh, Drew's on there, and and he can just put, hey, I need good fighting information for this location. Somebody will somebody will help him out. Cool. That, you know, I'm glad that you brought that up because we get that all the time. We get the, I live in Pig Snort, Arkansas, and I'm looking for an instructor that's close to me that's worthwhile and valuable. Who should I go see? And, and cheap, and cheap, and, and we'll <laughs> teach when I want a class, and yeah, we'll teach it in my backyard. Yep. Well, I would take a class from you if you would just drive up here to Rhode Island. I'm like, well, okay, I'll get in my car. I met a bunch of folks mad when I said I won't teach any further north than, than PA. And the only reason I teach as far north as PA is because there's more Confederate flags flying there than there is in the south. So I kind of feel a kinship with those folks. But I'm not going any further north than that. <laughs> but you will go west. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, we got we just got one coming in. Some dude named um, Benjamin Thomas wants to know why you didn't answer his call. <laughs> Some dude named what? Benjamin Thomas wants to know why, what? why you didn't answer his call. Uh, well, I'm doing a uh, I'm doing a uh, phone interview with a student of the gun right now. Uh, <laughs> Keep your panties on, Mookie. That's that's that's. Did the he end. really? He used to text me from the back seat when we'd be on road trips. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, hey, dude, what are you doing right now? It's like, hey, man, there's a liquor store at the next exit. <laughs> and then I'd pass it, and he'd go, hey, you missed that liquor store. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Uh, so are, are we, are we, have we exhausted? Yeah, we'll, we'll probably have more come in later. But Of course, that's what, that's what will happen is for the next three days we will get that's questions for you. They don't pay attention. Yeah. They, they don't. They don't, but... That's all right. Well, save them up. I'll do another one. All right. Well, James Yeager of Tactical Response and everything else cool. And uh, now, all right. I got one he, for he you. Has a, he's, he has a YouTube channel. That's his yeah, name to find. And of YouTube. And of YouTube <laughs> infamy. Uh, do you have a television show and or movie in which you are starring coming out anytime soon? Uh, looks like the premiere for the movie Daylight's End will be in June. Aha. There we go. That's the post-apocalyptic uh, where they got yeah. all the pipe hitters and cool guys and Sonny Rosicas <laughs> and stuff together. As a side note, as a side note, the director, who is a good guy, he's a he is a legit gun guy. Um, just released Marine Four, and I don't know if he did any of the other ones, but I know he uh, he told me he was directing Marine Four, and it's just like a you know it's a Walmart you can buy it at Walmart. It just came out. I like think a it's B, on Netflix. You know, B rated movie, but it has awesome gun handling it is like it's like a gunfight from beginning to end and cranks and scars and all kinds of wacky guns and and like this guy actually will like shoot somebody with his pistol and then pick up their gun and grab their spare mags and stick them in his pockets and you know it's it's still a movie but it like the gun handling and all that stuff is really really good in it excellent and that's hard to find excellent oh, yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's good because <laughs> real gun handling, like, if you do it correct, it doesn't. Look good. Again, again, it's a movie, yeah. but it's. But I'm telling you, when you watch it, like you'll notice that that there's some really good stuff happening. Well, it's and it, it's you know if you watch them close, like Uber geeks, like I'm sure you and I are, like uh, for instance, Blood Diamond. I don't know where yep. DiCaprio got his gun handling, but it was from someone who was institutionalized because I called yep. it the "How to Press Check Your Gun" movie. How many times right. he press check like he's in the middle of a running gunfight and he's press checking his gun like really apparently <laughs> apparently that's what you do and I've been wrong all these years so uh, uh, man I, uh, while we're talking about movies and guns uh, Sahara um, 
it's like a comedy action movie with with McConaughey. Um, it's got the good looking guy and the yeah, little short guy. Yeah, with yeah, him. yes, yeah. That's it's been out for a while, Sahara. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's a couple of years old, but that that little dude runs that AK like he means it, like. Like in that movie, he gets in a gunfight and picks up an AK, and I'm like, wow, he switches shoulders and he, you know, he picks it up and looks at the magazine to see if there's ammo in it and puts it back in the gun and get. I mean, so as, I was like really impressed with that scene where he's 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 fighting it out with that guy. Sometimes I see these and I want I want to know. I'm like like who taught these guys? You know, right. You know, sometimes it's you. Sometimes the answer is James Yeager. Uh, but, well, but not I, I, always. I trained like. Uh, you know, uh, um, Jeremy Renner, you know, for pistol and, and rifle and stuff. And, and then he gets in born and he's doing cup and saucer. I'm like, what are you doing, man? I've spent a lot of time teaching. Well, did, did the director think right. it looked cooler that way or what? Or just, uh, I don't I think he just forgot. He reverted. Well, that's the thing. It's like buying a car. You got to make payments. Yep. You can't just take one class and think you're done. That is the truth. That is the truth. And you're a student or a beginner once, but a student for life. There's that. <laughs> Someone told me that once. Shameless plug. Shameless plug. All right. Shameless plug. Uh, check out James Yeager in Daylight End, which will be premiering in June. You know you want to do it. Uh, he's all over the YouTuber and the Internet. And if you really want to train, uh, you can get your butt up to Tactical Response in Tennessee, where I'm hoping I will be in May. Uh, I haven't talked to Maryland. I need to talk to Marilyn and see if we got enough bodies to, to fill that class up. But that is another subject entirely. Make it happen. Make it happen. All right, James, thank you for being with us. I certainly appreciate it. Jerry, do you appreciate it? I do appreciate it. I'm, I'm very spoiled. <laughs> and we appreciate you coming on, dude. I appreciate you guys appreciate me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure it's all your pleasure. <laughs> All right. For all of you who had never heard James Yeager or are only familiar with him via his YouTube videos, or if you're like a lot of people, they're like, well, I won't even watch one because somebody told me that he was a misogynist. I don't and, like the shirt he wears. And, and, and his T-shirt was too tight. I didn't like his shirt, and I decided I wasn't going to watch his videos. So, uh, um, yeah, that was an actual insight into the, the mind of James Yeager. And James Yeager... Uh, Here's what you need to know about James Yeager. He's an alpha male. And if you don't know what alpha male means, you, you actually need to get some education. A lot of people don't understand alpha males in it because, well, because they've been raised by uh, eunuchs, essentially. But, uh, yeah, don't, don't go to an alpha male school and expect them to change just because you want them to or to say what you want them to say. Because it's not going to happen. And it's not just Jaeger. There's lots of alpha males out there. Um, but we, we do highly recommend tactical response. I mean, we obviously highly recommend our classes. But if you don't take a class from us, uh, that would be that, that. Tactical response in uh, Tennessee or TDI, Ohio, Tactical Defense Institute in Ohio, those are the tops of my list uh, as far as that. And if you're way out west and you want to get some training, you can get some training from ITTS uh, in California within the People's Republic or uh, in Guns at Gunsight out there in Arizona. Uh, those and those are the top of my list. I'm I'm still waiting, Jared, to hear back from Shane because there's big news in Texas. There's going to be a really big uh, a shift or advancement in training in East Texas, but uh, we haven't confirmed that yet. That will be cool. That will be very cool. Yes, it's going to be in and around a city called Nacogdoches or Nacogdoches, and for those people who are hip to texas and i know that texas is our number one state so if you're in or around or driving range to uh driving distance to nacogdoches uh <laughs> i know it's not cheese nacogdoches uh there's going to be a school there actually is a school right there now but it's going to be uh i've already let that out of the bag they're going to be doing more public classes more uh more training and which reminds me, I need to give Shane a call today. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that's it. Uh, I hope that you enjoyed installment number one. And this is going to be our, this is obviously our special grad program week. Uh, we've been promoting it uh, for a while. And we figured, what the heck, what, what better way to kick it off than with an exclusive, behind the scenes, student of the gun interview of James Yeager, MFCEO of Tactical Response. You ready to, to uh, bump me out there, kid? You ready to, to uh, I mean, I guess I could play probably, the music? I could probably do that. Play the music. The hard rock in Madison rising music. 
that tells the kids there that lets them know that it's okay to go do other things now you realize that right because until we play that music they're not going anywhere play that funky music play that funky music all right kids until tomorrow or the next day or the next this is professor paul reminding that you that you are a beginner once but you should indeed be a student for life